Well, good morning. Today is November the 27th. It's a joy to be coming to you this day after Thanksgiving. The title of today's devotional is The Salvation and Testimony of Sosthenes. Our scripture reading today is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now we're continuing our chronological reading of God's Word, and we are today beginning our study of Paul's letter to the church and the saints in Corinth, 1 Corinthians. Now, in the preceding devotional in Acts chapter 18, I introduced you to the city of Corinth. It was the capital of Achaia, which was a Roman province. Corinth was a seaport city on the Mediterranean Sea. And by Paul's day, Corinth had actually eclipsed ancient Athens in its commerce, in its culture, and sadly, in its wickedness. Now, Paul's 18-month-long ministry in Corinth was fruitful. Acts chapter 18 and verse 11 gives us that. And there were many Jews and many Gentiles that came to believe and accept Jesus Christ as Savior. And nevertheless, there was a great opposition to the gospel so that Paul had rebuked the Jews in Acts chapter 18 and verse 6 saying, Your blood be upon your heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. Now, Paul did depart later on from Corinth. And the letter of 1 Corinthians is a letter now that he is sending back to the believers there. I believe this was probably written during his third missionary journey. And you'll find in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, it is an encouraging letter, but it is also a letter to a struggling church. Now, the members of the church in Corinth were far from perfect, by the way, as are all churches. But remembering the moral wickedness of that culture, the presence of idolatry, the universal depravity of man, we understand the spiritual stress that the members of that church were under from within and from without. Now, Paul, not one to ever shirk his role as an apostle or a preacher, writes in this letter passionately about several issues. Among them are the moral failures of believers in the body. Uh, there was a contentious and divisive spirit. He addresses the believer's liberty, for instance, whether or not believers should be eating meat that has been offered to idols. He deals with the issue of marriage and divorce, spiritual gifts, and even the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what that meant to the church of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, I encourage you today, read the scripture. Don't allow this little devotional to be the sum total of your study of the Bible. In fact, I'm only going to focus on one verse today, and that is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1, where we read, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and, now listen to this, Sosthenes, our brother. Now, who was this Sosthenes. And why is he mentioned by name in this letter to Corinth? Well, to answer that question, I invite you to go back and look at Acts chapter 18 and verses 9 through 17. And that's where you're going to see Sosthenes first mentioned, not as a friend, but as an adversary of Paul and the gospel. Now remember, in Corinth, there were Hellenistic Jews, that is, Jews of Greek origin. And we read in Acts chapter 18 and verse 12 that they had made an insurrection with one accord against Paul. Now, they had brought Paul to the judgment seat where there was a man named Galileo. He was the deputy or the Roman procurator of Achaia, and he sat in judgment. Now, he would have been the highest authority in that Roman province. Galileo, demonstrating his prejudice towards the Jews, had no tolerance for the religious squabble that they had with Paul. In fact, he humiliated the Jews by dismissing or driving them out. And it's interesting, those Greek Jews turned on Sosthenes 
the leader of their insurrection. And we read in Acts 18 and verse 17, all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and they beat him before the judgment seat. And it goes on to say, and Galileo cared for none of those things. Now, this Sosthenes, the adversary of Paul that stirred up the Jews against the gospel, is the same one that Paul is writing to in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1 where he writes, Sosthenes, our brother. What a wonderful testimony of a spiritual transformation. Sosthenes had obviously come to believe that Jesus Christ was indeed the Messiah, the Savior, the Lamb of God, sacrifice of the Calvary, uh, cross of Calvary for our sins, buried, raised from the dead. At some point, Sosthenes was convicted and accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. Paul, as he's writing this letter now back to Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1, he speaks of Sosthenes and he refers to him as our brother. No longer the troublemaker, no longer the chief uh, leader of the synagogue in Corinth. He is Paul's spiritual brother and his fellow laborer. Now here's a question for you today. Have you known the transformation of a new spiritual nature that begins with sincere salvation? Paul would write to this same church in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, these words. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Sosthenes was now our brother because his nature had been transformed by not only his salvation, but his ongoing sanctification, God's Holy Spirit working in his life. My friend, I ask you today, is Jesus Christ your Savior? If he is and you are yielded to his will, you will be transformed as with Sosthenes. Put your faith in Christ. Don't continue in your sin. Don't look at church membership or anything else as the security of your salvation. Our salvation is in Christ alone through God's grace. And I pray that you'll turn to him today. God bless you. Have a great day. I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.